V8s, Jeeps. That's where it's at. How do we want to start this off? Usually push the record button on the camera. <laughs> That's how you start. I've been vlogging for years, so let me show you how this is done. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is Fluffy. If you haven't seen him before, you clearly haven't been on YouTube very much. <laughs> All right, guys, we are here at Epic Adventure Outfitters. You may remember this from previous videos that we reviewed Fluffy 1.0. It is now no longer a supercharged V6, but we have a 392 that the Ginger just finished putting in it. This is kind of a little precursor to our Gladiator build that's gonna be coming to the channel a little later, but I'll let you in on a little secret. It isn't a 392. We're finally gonna do that two two liter thing, aren't we? Two two <laughs> dual engines. Technically two two liter <laughs> turbos, so it'd be twin turbo, two four cylinder motors. That technically equals an eight cylinder, but with twin turbos. It's gonna be sweet. Yeah, so we uh, we rehomed Fluffy a few months back <laughs> and found him a new forever home, and that particular owner would like Fluffy to uh, run a little harder and faster. And so, so we got the 392 V8, and this is a kit this from is America's a full Most Wanted. conversion kit from America's Most Wanted. I've been down there, done their training, um, and we are gonna be doing a lot more of these. We have four already slated to go as it is. One of them is yours eventually. <laughs> but not and a 392. Not a 392. 392. We actually have no 392s coming up in the next four builds. Everyone's. So what are the options? What, I mean, let's talk about, like we got a 392 in here. What other engine transplants can we put so, in these? We have technically four choices, despite they list five. Um, we're never gonna do a Helephant. They're a rare engine to even get a hold of. They only of. made like a hundred or something like that, those motors. They're really low production. They they did a hundred. They're gonna do another 50 of them this year. I yeah, let's get back to what engine options we have so, and then we'll uh, we are talk going to be offering the 392, which will be referred to as the 505 kit. We're gonna do the 426, which is a 392 that's been all forged internals and made to be a 426 with 606 horsepower. And so the other one is 505 horsepower, yes. the 392. Yeah, and then the next two, we're gonna go a little crazier. We're gonna offer the Hellcat conversion at 707 horsepower, and then we're gonna offer a Demon a slash Red Eye conversion, which will be 840 horsepower and a really good time. 840 horsepower just sounds so much better. Yeah, that, that sounds like like a lot of gas. So the Ginger's choice is? I would do a 426 if I was gonna do one. You which, never uh, after seeing you just move this in the parking lot, I feel like those days are not too far away. Oh, no, no, <laughs> it takes weeks to get an engine, so they're far away. <laughs> it takes uh, weeks. <laughs> just, <laughs> the Ginger's timeline of far away is less than a month. <laughs> yeah, like that Jeep's, that's, no. No, that Jeep's not getting, my new one's not getting an engine. I, I got one more question before we get into this because since I said that we're doing a V8 swap on my Gladiator that's coming, people keep asking, you guys, people, you guys keep asking me. I get DMs on Instagram, which if you want to follow over there, uh, I post a little more frequently. How much does this cost? So each engine option. Just DM me. I'll tell just, you just, all the secrets. There you go. <laughs> that's fine. I'll just tell them all. <laughs> Every <laughs> secret. Um, so you guys keep asking me how much this costs now, but the AMW kits are not just an engine. You're not getting no, an no. engine in You're a box, getting a right? Engine that is a service motor fr direct from Mopar that has some pieces pulled off, different pieces put on that are all factory uh, wiring harnesses that are made from a OEM tier one supplier. So everything's ready to go. They dress the motor for you. You don't even have to put the belt on. Better um, than getting dressed in the morning. Exactly. <laughs> already have AC on it, everything. And this is just, this is a, this is meant to be a very factory like yes. engine swap. I've right seen now. a lot of conversions over the years and this is the cleanest I've ever seen. And I was very impressed when I visit their facility. Uh, it also comes with specific transmissions attached to it that are full fluid, ready to go new. And uh, if you need a Rubicon transfer case, if you're doing this to a non Rubicon model, it can come with that too. And, and then they have their custom and adapter have, plate for that, which their is custom a adapter housing basically comes with everything you need and a full high flow cat cat back magna flow exhaust system. Well, I don't see why it needs that. 
Well, realistically, <laughs> your neighbors would prefer it not just dump at the manifold. <laughs> neighbors, come on. <laughs> Whoa, and that kicks down though. Like, I'm just barely, barely touching the throttle. You guys are doing swaps. Uh, you're the certified installer here in British Columbia, and you're doing swaps on new vehicles purchased through White Rock Dodge only yep. at this time. We're looking more at the turnkey options is there's a lot of times that parts you may have already installed are now going to interfere or cause a problem or something's missing now. We even had to change a bunch of parts on this that we changed when we supercharged it that did not work with this conversion. We had to order all new like rad supports and condensers and stuff like that that you wouldn't know at the time. So if you start with a clean slate, you know it's gonna work, everything just is all new, warrantied, and you don't have to worry about it. Warrantied? Warrantied. Well, tell me about that. Uh, White Rock Dodge and Epic Adventure Outfitters and America's Most Wanted work together to make sure this has a three or 60 warranty, because uh, it's all Mopar parts all the way through, except for a couple of America's Most Wanted things, even right down to the tape we're using on the wiring. So that's almost as good as buying one buying a 392 wrangler i mean except for this sounds better goes faster and rear wheel drive wheel drive <laughs> and it is rear wheel drive so you can do burnouts without a taser mm, I like even though you of... do get a taser with the conversion talking swaps now i know you can go on amw4x4.com and they kind of give you some rough pricing but um and the rough pricing is not showing any of the extras you need to buy or what it costs to get to Canada or any of that stuff. So uh, up here in Canada, what is our kind of starting point for like a 392 swapped into a new, new? I mean, you get the Gladiator so with you're it. you're gonna get a package. built Gladiator with a 392 in it, you're gonna be in the 160K ballpark. For Canadian dollars, so that's like 50 US. 50, so basically we're like giving them away if you get Pretty much, ones. like US people probably come up here and buy them from us. <laughs> but that's including like suspension stuff? Suspension yep. that will be TerraFlex Falcon suspension that is tuned for the America's Most Wanted stuff. So it's not your off the shelf stuff. It's a tuned set of Falcons with a special set of springs meant to hold this engine up, which we're still waiting to put in this because it'll be arriving <laughs> it's next on week. its way. That's why it's still here. Kind of looking on AMW4x4's website, they kind of seem to stagger the engine kits around 20,000 or so US incrementally going up. Yep. There's going to be more fees and stuff getting them up in the Canada, but I just kind of wanted to give you guys a ballpark of where this price point is. So if you're looking at a new Gladiator with the first level swap, the 392, you're in that 160 range and probably into the 200s if you're going all the way up to the 840. Uh, demon swap so and this will this one will be the most reliable solid option is this one because this engine came straight from Chrysler with nothing modified and 426 is this engine sent out uh, uh, stroked, stroked forged internals bunch of other stuff to convert it to a 426 cool now and then we start adding force induction superchargers all that fun stuff yeah. for the bigger horsepower engine but let's do a walkthrough let's take a look at some of the work that went into putting this engine in to fluffy 2.0 then we're going to put it up on the lift and uh we'll take a look at underneath we can have a look at the bottom of the engine the oil pan all that stuff uh and how it connects up to the transmission and the transfer case and just how clean and tidy and oem looking these kits are um it's incredibly impressive uh, to see these installed. It's so clean, you can't not say it. <laughs> exactly. It's that simple. You could hate Jeeps, but you're going to walk in here and go, damn. <laughs> could eat off that engine. I, so. I'm going to have to, I'm going to stand behind here for a bit. Yeah. So the first thing I noticed under here is, well, we've moved the air box over to the driver's side. And uh, it's known that you get more air on the left side of the car than the right. <laughs> So we've got the uh, air intake over here. Obviously, we've got the 392 V8 sitting under the hood, but you know, this is what I really wanted to get into. This is super clean. Uh, it's just fair. This looks like it just came from the factory like this. Except for the cold air intake look here, that it's pretty much like yeah. the simple things you'll notice. It's still using quick connects for the heater core. Same quick connects that were on the two, uh, the three six or the AC is exactly where it was when you took the 3.6 out. The battery box is pretty much exactly the same. The battery's in the same spot. We didn't do anything to the fuse box. Like there's so many things that just didn't move. Like the horns are in the same spot. Yeah. They fit a giant rat in there. And so you've got everything you would have from the factory, like cruise control, air conditioning, 
all your knobs work on your steering when we wheel. first fired this up it literally just fired up and didn't have any engine lights that's awesome yeah the yeah. only thing we had to do was use the taser to say hey you don't have hydromatic electric steering anymore. <laughs> Stop looking for it. This is the one thing for me that kind of sticks out as being a potential problem with what some of the off-roading and trails we go is having the cold air intake and not having the really nice air box that Jeep has designed to help prevent get water into your intake. Um, but you know, I'm sure we can figure something out down the road. But Does uh, this look like a submarine, Casey? Like Are you a child and drive through a lot of puddles? Have you watched my videos? No. Do you, have a, do you have a YouTube channel? Yeah. Oh. Oh, man. So what's the issue with this drive shaft? That's what we were talking about a it's minute ago. You got to way overextended. Yeah. <laughs> In the whole conversion, you end up moving the transfer case back uh, about an inch or more. Uh, so it's pulling the drive shaft back. Yeah. And we've got the oil pan from a power wagon. Really? Yep. Is it more durable? It's or is metal. It just higher clearance? It's oh. steel. Heat shield over the starter. You got the manifolds from the SRT8 or Trackhawk or one of them. Yeah. Grand Cherokees. And then the exhaust is made completely by Magnaflow. The high flow cats, the muffler, and the resonator all oh. the way back. And this is all part of the kit that you get from AMW or part of your install here at Epic? Yes. It's all part of the kit. So this is what we are talking about here a second ago. Let's see if we can get a good shot of the adapter plate. So this is how you connect up your uh, whatever version of V8 you're getting to your factory Rubicon transfer case. The reason you have to use the Rubicon transfer case is because the other ones don't have a removable uh, nose section. Oh, interesting. There you so go. that's what they're replacing. You take off the nose oh. section and this gets switched over the gears that are in it and moved over, mounts done. Now you know. Here's the new engine mounts. Cut all the old ones off, weld those on. Crazy. So it's gonna take you around 45 to 80 hours depending on which engine choice. And that doesn't include like building of the vehicle. It's just the engine conversion. Yeah, so building of the vehicle as in suspension and other Everything modifications else. that we need to add to but it. Just getting the power plant changed over and running properly. And it so. depends on which motor you go with, right? Like mm -hmm. the Demon 840 package is much more extensive. Yeah, it's around 80 hours. Yeah, so you can probably do it in what, a week? <laughs> By not going home, yes. <laughs> Yes, I forgot that's what I try and aim for. The ginger usually week. aims for an 80 to 100 hour work week like the rest of us. And we are here on a Saturday afternoon uh, shooting this video. So we would be at home with our families if it wasn't for Casey. <laughs> you know, I guess a lot of people are going to ask, like, what's Ooh, where people can actually do this? And is this street legal? Or, and I guess that really depends a lot on where depends you are. Depends where you right? live. Yeah. There's a lot of gray areas we all choose to live in because we like to have fun. <laughs> like lifting your vehicle at all. Yeah. But I know for sure if you're in California, it's going to vary They're a lot. They're working state on carb state. compliance right now. Really? Yeah. Okay, so there you go. Um, so the kits are definitely uh, trying to be street legal. It, it just depends so much on where you are. But that would be really interesting to see a uh, California emissions compliant kit come out because that would open up to a whole you're lot of you jeepers. Vehicles in California? Yeah, well, that's probably the next thing. It's gonna. I carb, thought we were all electric in California. Carb, carb compliance is gonna be electric and hybrid only, probably next. <laughs> Excellent. By 2024. Yeah. Sounds really nice and idle. All right, bring her out. <laughs> oh, jeez. I scared Polly knocking, knocking boxes over. Boy, does that sound good. All Jeeps should just come with a V8 in them. Get rid of these V6s and turbo four liters or four cylinders or whatever two liter it is. All Jeeps should come with that in it. I don't even know why they make them with anything else. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I can smell that. <laughs> Did you leave a smoke trail behind you? There, there's a bunch of- Is that a cop? Are you getting pulled over? feels really nice just driving around and when you want to go you know that's just, go. just bumping the throttle oh. 
huge thanks to Stefan at White Rock Dodge, who is going to be the new owner of this, for uh, letting us do these final test drives. Well, I got to say, I am impressed with the 392 swap into Fluffy, the uh, Mojave. That is awesome, but I feel like it needs more power. So if you want to find out what's going on and what's going to be in my Gladiator build, the V8 swap we're doing, make sure you subscribe. We're going to have the whole build series, as I mentioned, coming up as soon as that Gladiator arrives. My motor's already on the way. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and let me know if you have any comments, questions, anything like that about swaps, mods, off-roading. Leave them down in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video.